Chief of Package Design Magazine, I speak with some of the most brilliant thought leaders in the design, branding, and marketing of consumer packaged goods. Through the generous support of our sponsors, we bring these experiences to you. This video series explores what inspires these thought leaders and their insights on the collaborative design process as a strategic business competence. I'm Linda Casey, and this is Package Design Matters. Today we're at the American Packaging Summit, and we're here with John Hall, founder of Goose Island Brewery. Hi, John. Hi, Linda. Thank you for joining us. Now, what is so interesting about your background is that you have really, you know, you've taken success, and you've been successful in more than one arena. You've been successful not only as a brand, but also as a packaging supplier. Can you tell our audience a little bit about that journey? Well, uh, I think it's the eye of the beholder a little bit. Uh, I uh, spent 20 years with Container Corporation of America and uh, had uh, I started out in marketing and sales and got into finance and then into uh, planning for the corporation and then ran a division uh, of the company. So I had a pretty broad exposure, uh, but uh, after 20 years I was ready to do something on my own. The consumer world was once static. We then came to understand the role of a brand. In turn, the world has changed. With the foundation of observations, insights, strategy, collaboration and extraordinary ideas, design serves as the conduit for a brand. Without design, what purposes do these efforts serve? Why bear? Uh, why not? <laughs> uh, really, when you, you think about it, I, I wanted to make something. I, I really felt I wanted to make something. Uh, so I looked at really getting into packaging, maybe label manufacturing. I looked at buying a uh, label manufacturing company and a couple things like that. Uh, but then I read this uh, magazine article about uh, small little breweries on the West Coast. and. I'd spent a lot of time in Europe, and in the back of my mind, I always wondered why we didn't have the variety of beers available here in the States that uh, you saw in Europe. At the start of a project where it's a blank piece of paper and the problem seems a pretty challenging one, how do we get inspired is, I think, a really useful question to get something from an idea or a concept all the way into manufacture. It is a team process, it's a very collaborative process. It's really about the collective and that is the powerful piece. One person with one idea plus one person with another idea is potentially three and beyond really good ideas. We're delighted uh, to have our name attached to such an incredible list of contributors. But I imagine that some people probably raise an eyebrow because, as you said, there weren't a lot of microbreweries. I mean, the word craft brewery really wasn't coined yet. And the idea of starting a new brand and a new business in a merchant category, that's pretty scary. Uh, I guess it. I guess it is a little bit. Uh, I was. Uh, I was probably a little overconfident, if anything. But uh, I had done a lot of things, and 
manage some things, so I felt pretty confident of what I could do. And this was in the mid 80s, just when so many things were happening. Uh, this is when Starbucks got started. Uh, this is wine was exploding with all the varietals and everything like that. Uh, you look at ethnic foods. Ethnic foods were this starting. And you think of all those things, and beer was really the exception that didn't have variety. So uh, I thought, and I was pretty confident that I could manage something and get something done. We live in a fast-changing digital world. Dynamic communication and social expression influence just about everything we do. Business is digital. Impact is instant. Brands and customers interact in amazing new ways. From postage stamps to packaging and billboards, HP's graphic solutions business is leading these transformations, creating innovative digital print technologies that enable more effective, engaging communication between brands and end users. And variety is such a big part of the Goose Island brand. And it, you know, when we talked, uh, when you talked earlier, you talked about how you had to educate your consumer on the, the different varieties of beer. But that's true of any of any product. You really have to educate the consumer that what makes your product unique. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, one of the things about the product or the brand was that we had variety and we were innovative. Do you believe a stronger idea can lift an entire business? Or that a single insight can spark new ways to succeed? At Bemis, we believe there's always a better way to boost consumer demand, stand out on the shelf, or create a deeper brand experience. Today, we strive to see the world as you see it. And when that happens, there's no limit to where you can take your packaging or your business. And innovation is a big part of the brand, both in the product as well as the package design. Well, uh, we all started uh, with the traditional uh, uh, brews that have been in Europe for a number of years, English and, uh, and uh, German and Belgium in particular. Those three countries are probably the ones that we, uh, we really dwelled on the most. But not unlike a chef, you take some of the traditional recipes and then you start putting new ingredients in and uh, making them a little bit differently. You get a product that is, uh, is unique. And part of what makes your products unique is how it's aged. In a sense, there's a packaging story even before the beer gets in the packaging because beer is aged in barrels, and barrels were a real important part of your product innovation. Uh, well, uh, it, it kind of has come full circle because uh, before stainless steel and, uh, and plastics and other things, uh, all beer, uh, was really made in wood, wooden uh, 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 forders or uh, tanks and barrels. And with cellulose, it's not a very aseptic uh, condition, so you're going to have some residual yeast in there that's going to really impact the flavor and character of the beer. So once uh, uh, brewers had the ability to not use wood and get away from cellulose, they really went to it whole hog, as so to speak. That's the only way they made their beer. And then they could really uh, ensure that it was going to be the way they wanted it to be. Uh, and uh, we kind of took it back there uh, when we first introduced Bourbon County Stout. And that, but they were doing some of this in Belgium all along, but it wasn't really uh, common here in America. So you kind of looked into Europe to see what to do here, but you know, I think of um, when I think of Goose Island, and it may be because of my background. Growing up in Chicago, I was born and raised in Chicago, and one of my fondest memories are visiting the brewery uh, when you first started it, and um, it just with my college sweetheart was one of our faves. And um, when you, you know when you started that, it was very much a Chicago brand. Chicagoans felt like it belonged to them. What were some of the challenges of taking this very local brand and making it international? Because at one point you even had the, you know, you had the Chicago stars on your necker, didn't you? Well, we still do on one of the labels. We use the Chicago flag. But I mean, the whole, uh, my whole uh, 
goal was being Chicago's beer. I mean, I had, I had no dream whatsoever of of uh, really making beer outside of Chicago. I thought, you know, Chicago is a big, big city, and uh, if I could get, uh, you know, two to five percent of the of the share market of Chicago, and why shouldn't I? I mean, you think of all the other things that people take great pride in. You have bakeries, you have everything else. So why shouldn't we have a, a beer? And and a lot of people visit Chicago. Chicago is the you know really the cultural capital of the Midwest, but it's a big international global city that people travel to. So I think when people came to Chicago, they saw uh, something that they had a good time with, and it it traveled well when they went back. And where has your brand traveled to? Where can you buy this island? Well, uh, uh, we were in, I think, 26 states uh, in 2010, 2011, when AB purchased Goose Island. And two years later, they took us national, so we're in all 50 states. And we've been in the UK since basically 2000. And uh, now we're in uh, uh, several countries in Europe. Uh, in China and soon to be in uh, several places in South America. Amazing. And I imagine that a lot of the package design um, strategy and process has changed a lot as you've moved from a small startup, small local startup, to part of a big international company like AB. Well, uh, it has and it hasn't. I mean, what we uh, I mean, beer is fairly traditional on how, how we package. Uh, uh, when we started uh, our brewery and bottling plant, Fulton Street Brewery, in, in 1995, we used a 12-ounce bottle like everybody else. And uh, we used a bottle that was really pretty generic because cost was a big factor of what it was. Uh, then as we got into our reserve beers, which later became our... Uh, our uh, uh, our uh, Seven Sisters and, and Bourbon County Stout and all that, we used a 22-ounce bomber bottle, again, because of those availability and, and the cost involved. But uh, as we've gotten bigger, we can afford more, and now we're in a specialty 750-milliliter, uh, uh, almost a champagne bottle that, uh, for our, for our uh, uh, vintage beers. And then we're uh, doing a specific uh, proprietary bottle for our Bourbon County Stout that's going to be available this year. Yeah, that bottle looks so amazing. Do you, can you share any details about that packaging or no? Well, it's, uh, it looks very much uh, like a bourbon type bottle and really it fits uh, the image of the product much more than what we used before. Wonderful. And, you know, with all this variety of product, I think that it, it's, it really speaks to an industry wide problem that we always kind of are facing and, and trying to trying to overcome as brands mature. So as a brand matures, there seems to be a commodization of the brand because people um, maybe lose that initial connection they have with the brand. But you've been really able to avoid the erosion of your profit margins by introducing more variety into your product line. Well, I think it's important to keep your, uh, keep your brand uh, current and fresh, and uh, tastes do change, and with innovation particularly. Uh, uh, you look at the craft beer and IPAs, and pale ales in particular, they're very, very popular now, uh, but there are so many different varieties that you can go off of. There hops, hops are a little bit like grapes, there's almost an unlimited variety, and with that you can come up with a lot of different varieties of uh, IPAs. Um, the same thing with our uh, uh, wine and barrel aged products. Uh, there's um, a lot of uh, different products that you can introduce into the beer to give it unique flavors that uh, really uh, do very well with uh, food. And so, we, you know, we talk about the wine and barrel aged products. I believe we have one of the wine products, aged products here, don't we? Uh, Sophie. Sophie. Uh, Sophie is a uh, basically a Belgian Cezanne, and a Belgian Cezanne is really, it's a very loose description of a beer. It's a refreshing beer that was generally made uh, by farmers for their workers in the field. So it's not a, a real uh, narrow definition of a beer. Uh, we took it and uh, we aged it in uh, uh, wine barrels 
and then we put orange zest in there. Age it for uh, about six months, and then we do some blending. And with it, we have almost a champagne-like uh, beer. Wonderful. So it seems like something that would really appeal to the younger crowd, the Moscato wine drinking crowd. Well, it, uh, it's, it's a little lighter. It's a little more carbonated. Uh, it uh, has a, a, a lighter characteristic. It's, it's very wine-like almost and uh, goes wonderful with uh, salads and uh, seafood. Mm-hmm. So uh, it, uh, it uh, undoubtedly, and I don't have statistics on it, appeals more to the female beer consumer. But uh, I think what people want is they want personalization of things. And almost all of our beers have a story behind them uh, that really uh, go into uh, what the creation of the the beer is and what's behind the beer. A story honoring either a granddaughter or somebody in brewing that uh, was very inspirational to us to come up with the beer in the first place. Well, then you have to tell us. What is your favorite story? What's the most inspirational story behind one of the brands? Well, uh, there's a couple good ones. Well, I mean, Lolita, everybody's got a story on Lolita, so I don't have to tell you anything there. (laughs) Uh, But uh, Madame Rose, uh, Madame Rose uh, was a stripper in uh, in Belgium, also worked uh, in in a brewery, in the brewery, ended up uh, owning the brewery. Oh, my goodness. So that's a good one. And uh, and then Matilda, of course, uh, that's one of our... uh, uh, more uh, popular beers. Matilda is uh, named after a, uh, a Tuscan countess that uh, really funded the Orval Trappist Brewery, or, or Trappist Abbey, that also makes a beer, which is an inspiration for the Matilda beer. What's so interesting about these examples is that when I think beer, I don't always think about the female consumer, but these are all strong female stories. I mean, the story, uh, the story of Madame Rose, I mean, it's, it's like the Veuve Clicquot story, but a little racier. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's amazing that it, here's Goose Island, a brand that maybe um, people like me before this interview had thought was, you know, something that the men of Chicago owned. But really, it's a brand that belongs to both sexes. I hope so. <laughs> but I, I think, again, it's how you connect with the consumer. And uh, if, you, if you have a story behind it that's authentic, that has some meaning behind the product, uh, it's much more uh, meaningful to the consumer. Definitely, definitely. And you've changed your package design to really reflect how the consumer base is changing. So your original logo on your brewery was really more suited for the customer who you were telling me on the phone before as we were preparing for this interview that that logo was really more about the brewery customer and then how you had this evolution of the logo as the customer. Well, we started as a brew pub and uh, and what we wanted to do is create a very uh, uh, inviting atmosphere uh, for uh, just not your young 21 to 30-year-old drinkers, but everybody, and have a, a very diverse uh, customer base, uh, which we did. And we had the original Goose logo uh, was kind of like a pub that you would see in mm-hmm. London. And uh, that's not very distinctive uh, on the shelf if you're going to attract uh, a buyer. So we had to be a little more masculine, a little more forward with the logo, uh, the original Goose Island logo, and where it's evolved into today. Yeah, and today it's a very modern look, and you even have your more modern brands. I mean, three one two—that's that's a very different kind of label versus your old labeling for your heritage brand. Well, we we originally started with uh, traditional beers, and uh, and to go to uh, the lighter, uh, more uh, inviting uh, entry level beers for craft, uh, such as what we have with our urban pale ale and our urban. Uh, pale ale uh, uh, that uh, we had to create something that was a little bit different. In other words, we would have taken away from the traditional product a little bit. We had to separate a little bit, or else we were going to lose somebody or not gain somebody. You know, naming such a big part of design, marketing, and branding. I'm going to put you on the spot here. Tell me a little bit about. I know the story, but I, I would love for our audience to know a little bit more of the story behind the name Sophie. Uh, Sophie is my granddaughter, and uh, 
uh, my son, who's kind of the creative guy in the in the company, in more ways than one, from beer, but also from a marketing standpoint, said he wanted to name a beer Sophie, and I said, I don't know if we want to do that, Greg. But we talked about it a little bit, and uh, Greg has always had a way of uh, uh, getting me over on his side, but uh, uh, that was really what it is. And, it, you know, it just shows the connection that we have and what we believe as a family uh, on that. You know, having a beer named after your granddaughter really is able to show the consumers that Goose Island may be owned by AB InBev now, but it's still, at its heart, it's still a craft brewer.